Hello, uh, welcome to the 121 meetings. My name is Joe Hamilton. I'm the CEO of Unigold, uh, and I will give you a brief introduction to the company. Um, as I go through this presentation, I will be making some forward looking statements. Uh, the information is accurate as we know it today, but it may change in the future. Unigold is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It also has a quote on the OTCQX market in the US. Current market capitalization is between 35 and $40 million. There's about 126 million shares outstanding. We have about 20 million warrants as well associated with an issue that we completed uh, in August of 2020. Uh, if those were exercised, those warrants would bring in approximately uh, $6 million. Um, with options, our fully diluted position is about 160 million shares. Our largest shareholder is Eric Sprott. He owns 17% of the outstanding and about 19.9% of the, uh, on a partially diluted basis, officers and directors own uh, approximately 5% of the company. Our principal asset is in the Dominican Republic. Uh, the Nieta concession is on the west side of the Dominican Republic, uh, close to the border with Haiti. Um, it occupies uh, part of the island arc, the mountain range that runs from the northwest to the southeast through this part of Hispaniola is an old volcanic island arc of Cretaceous age. Um, also in the Dominican Republic, for those people that aren't familiar with the country, uh, Pueblo Viejo, uh, one of the uh, top 10 mines in the world and, and probably around number three as far as uh, annual production is concerned, uh, is in the country. It's a joint venture between Barrick and Newmont. Um, that mine uh, has got about uh, six to seven million ounces in reserves and about another 15 million ounces in resources. Uh, it's been in production uh, since 2010 under uh, Barrick and Newmont. Uh, prior to that, it was in production in the 70s and 80s. Uh, there's also um, a nickel laterite mine that is uh, owned by Glencore through their subsidiary American Nickel. And uh, there is a small copper gold producer in country as well. Uh, those are basically the metallic mines, but uh, the economy of the Dominican Republic uh, is the largest in Central America. It's a diversified economy with agriculture, manufacturing, uh, exports of uh, cement and raw materials as well. Uh, so uh, a dynamic place to be doing work. The Nieta concession is about 22,000 hectares. Uh, we have been actively exploring in this area since 20, or sorry, since 2002. Uh, we really got serious about exploration in 2010-2011. Uh, we focused our time on the Candelones deposits, which are shown on this slide in the lower left corner of the concession. Uh, in between 2011 and 2013, we um, put about 65,000 meters of drilling into this area and defined a uh, 2 million ounce um, inferred resource uh, there at Candelones. Uh, the rest of these targets and stars that you see on this um, map are uh, drill ready exploration targets. Uh, all of the groundwork has been done. Uh, we'll move out and start looking at some of those later on this year and for the next few years. Uh, in the meantime, we're trying to develop candelones, completing engineering studies on the oxide portion of this deposit and continuing to expand the um, sulfide portion of the deposit. Uh, the layout of candelones oxides are uh, on the west side. This is a uh, sort of a long section looking north. The sulfides in the sulfide pit are shown here. This was uh, an optimized pit that uh, encompassed the resource that we put out in 2013. As I said, there's about 65,000 meters of drilling uh, between 2011 and uh, 2013. There was about 30,000 meters of drilling on the oxide and sulfide portion of the deposit and a little bit of scout drilling. There was no drilling up until this year uh, to, the, um, uh, to the east of the pit. Uh, we put out uh, early in March um, the, uh, a drill hole with a new oxide discovery to the east of the pit, uh, as well as some deeper intercepts in the sulfides uh, below what was the old pit boundary. We're currently uh, engineering um, the oxide portion of the deposit uh, in uh, preliminary feasibility study, and we are also currently updating the sulfide resource estimate. Uh, both of those studies should be out uh, towards the end of March or early April. Um, as far as the oxide target is concerned, uh, there's a 92,000 ounce measured indicated resource plus another 38,000 ounces in inferred resources. Uh, that's all within 30 meters of the surface. It's a fairly uh, low strip ratio, about 0.2 to 1. 
Um, we're looking at putting this into production using the heat bleach technology, which results in a very low environmental footprint, uh, low strip ratio, no waste piles, no post-production tailing spawns. Production rate will be about 25 to 35,000 ounces of gold per year. Uh, putting in this small operation does a number of things for us. It uh, allows us to train a workforce in the area. It allows us to set up our logistics. Uh, but most importantly, it supports an application for a mining license over that part of the concession. Mining licenses are granted in the Dominican Republic for 75 years. Uh, so it gives us tenure over the, uh, over the ground for that length of time. Um, the sulfides though are the big win and also the bulk of the resource. There's uh, approximately one and a half million ounces in that pit optimized resource from uh, 2013. But since that time, we've put about another 30 to 35,000 meters of drilling uh, into the resources, looking at high grade sections uh, in, the, uh, in the resource area. Um, we are currently updating the resource estimate to include those uh, 30 to 35,000 meters of drilling. And those are principally on higher grade sulfide material that's running over three grams. Um, so I think that you'll see uh, shortly towards the end of March or uh, early April, um, an update to the tons and grade uh, that is uh, available to us in the sulfide portion of the deposit. Uh, to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, here is the, uh, the Candelones uh, deposit. You're looking uh, effectively north, uh, the pit, the drilling, uh, as well as the low grade mineralization is shown here and the high grade mineralization is shown in the dark red uh, blocks that are shown here. Um, if we remove the drill holes, I uh, get a better idea of what uh, the pit area looks like. Once again, the low grade mineralization uh, is shown in the light, uh, the light, the lighter color. Uh, the higher grade mineralization that we've been drilling is shown in the uh, in the dark red. And if I remove the low grade mineralization, you can see that these higher grade areas uh, uh, are certainly are continuous. We've done a fair amount of drilling into them, uh, and they're fairly thick and broad and consistent mineralization over those widths. Um, just putting it back together, uh, you can see what falls into the pit and what is currently lying underneath the pit. Uh, to give you another look at that in um, in what is effectively a cross section. Target A is one of these high grade areas. Target B is, uh, is also a high grade epithermal overprint. Um, earlier in uh, March, we put out our deepest intercept to, to date on target B, which was seven meters at about 22 grams of gold per ton with appreciable copper as well, about two and a half percent copper and uh, silver as well. Um, in, uh, also in early March, we put out the results of uh, two other drill holes, uh, 167 and 169. We discovered outside of the pit limits, a new uh, sulfide uh, area, 12 meters at about six grams. Uh, there's only one drill hole into this, but we expect that this will um, turn into another larger uh, epithermal uh, mineralization in this area. So we continue to expand those and continue to drill. Uh, once again, uh, a long section, you can see the old pit outline uh, here. Um, give you an idea of what some of the intercepts look like. Uh, you know, these are within these higher grade intercepts. This is not included in the resource estimate, but it will be uh, towards the end of March, early April with a new resource estimate, but very broad intercepts of very consistent grade in both targets A, B, and C. Um, so to give you an idea of what the uh, potential price catalysts are for our share price uh, and for our stock this year, uh, as I said, the oxide resource, we're completing a, a pre-feasibility study on that. That should be out at, towards the end of Q1 of this year. Uh, we will use that pre-feasibility study to submit an application for an exploitation or a mining license. And then throughout the rest of the year, we'll complete the bankable feasibility study and assemble the final permits. The sulfide resource will update the resource estimate in the first quarter of this year. Um, and then we will uh, carry on in the second quarter and do trade-off studies for open pit versus underground mining in that area. Um, once again, the, the open pit may allow us to maximize the resource. However, some of the low-grade mineralization um, will require a fairly large strip. So we'll look at, uh, we'll look at both underground and open pit uh, operations there. Um, and then we'll of course continue exploration. These deposits are not, by no means closed off. We continue to have exploration to depth and a long strike where we're making new discoveries and increasing the, uh, the resources that are available to us. And then later on this year, we'll start looking at some of those regional targets. We'll move out and prioritize them and then we'll start exploration drilling on those. Uh, such that we should be able to um, hopefully make announcements on new discoveries towards the end of this year. Um, so thank you for uh, joining Unigold, um, and I look forward to talking to you uh,
during the one-to-one -one conference. Thank you.